one year scholarship was established and this this was the you know the real transformative event um, scholarships had only been around since 1956 on a formal basis throughout the NC2A. But what did they do before 56? Well, I mean, th th this has to seem really weird to anybody today, but, but there, there was an assumption that to provide uh, a free education in return for athletic performances would be professionalism and therefore contrary to uh, the values of the institution. So. Uh, nobody could receive an athletic scholarship and uh, the only way you could be funded to to play football would be one if some friendly alumnus or booster would pay your way or two if you were provided some kind of on-campus work to pay for your education well what this meant in reality is you know you had boosters buying players and you had you know jobs like uh, you know, sweeping the snow off the sidewalks outside the L.A. Coliseum. You know, it became, you know, notoriously, scandalously and that fraudulent. Been very hard. Yeah, very hard indeed. <laughs> you got to find the snow first, right? <laughs> so, uh, and 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 th these things were really controversial. And actually, the Southern conferences adopted scholarships, though they wouldn't call them quite that, uh, in the 30s and 40s. And the Big Ten and the and the precursor of the Pac-10, the Old Pacific Coast Conference, resisted this. And they were accused of being hypocritical, and they accused the Southern Conferences of being professional. And so finally, after all the infighting uh, settled out, they had the scholarship in 1956. That, that term itself is a very interesting term. It's a scholarship. And it was a consciously selected term because the idea that you could be compensated, paid, for athletic prowess was again yeah. contrary yeah. to yeah. academic standards so it was a scholarship and in, and in fact you could quit the team and keep your scholarship because your scholarship was not tied in any way to athletic performance you know uh, or even participation so th th this was not surprisingly a matter of controversy and in the 60s there were several attempts um, by u usually faculty representatives from southern conferences to institute a one-year scholarship instead of a four-year scholarship. But it was recognized at the conferences that this would give an enormous amount of power to coaches. They could run off the players who they you know, didn't think measured up despite their expectations and offering them the scholarships. And uh, you know, these controversies you know, persisted through the 60s at several conventions. And then in 1973, the one-year scholarship was simply instituted and without discussion recorded in the proceedings of the conventions it, it was kind of a backroom deal and agreement uh, you know coaches had always wanted this but also this was a time when there was a lot of of uh, political unrest in the country and racial unrest in the country and a lot of football programs were experiencing these themselves there were you know the southeastern conference and other southern conferences were integrating their football programs for the first time northern campuses were having these uh, these conflicts between black football players and their coaches uh, it's it seems of course nobody would acknowledge this admit this openly but it seems that the one-year scholarship in addition to giving coaches the power over their athletes uh, uh, in, in, in terms of their performance, whether it measured up, it gave them control over their, their attitudes and their behaviors and so on. So I, th I think the unrest, and particularly the racial unrest of the late 60s, early 70s was a factor here. But anyway, what came out of the end of the 1973 uh, NC2A convention and then the following August at a special convention, uh, f football was divided into three divisions, one, two, and three, in order to acknowledge that some schools were competing at a higher level than others. What you had was a more focused uh, group of institutions committed to big time football who are now able to admit virtually anybody they want from, from the high school ranks. Uh, and that includes now a fully integrated collegiate athletic system. And so all these young African American kids from woefully underfunded, uh, formerly segregated schools were suddenly eligible to play college sports, you know, whether or not their schools had adequately prepared them for, for the college educational experience. And they had one-year scholarships only, yeah. and their continuing of their financial aid was dependent on how well they pleased the football coach. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law.
the leader of reform in legal education, and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.